The new deferred props feature of Inertia allows you to delay the loading and rendering of any of the props that you're passing down to your page components until after the initial page load. This is going to speed up the way that your application feels because you're getting that initial fast response and then you're going ahead and loading data. Now, this is possible with Inertia V1. In fact, the code that you see here is using Inertia V1. So let's go ahead and look at how we would do this previously. And then let's jump over to V2 and see how deferred props specifically helps clear this up. OK, so I'm going to go ahead and pass down a bunch of users in here. And let's go ahead and just do this in the standard way, first of all. So let's just say user and get. OK, so I'm going to go ahead and just see the database with a bunch of users. So let's say user factory and let's grab 100 users and let's go ahead and create them out. Great. OK, so over to our dashboard, let's go ahead and pull these in. So let's define out our props in here and we will pull them users in as an array of data. And let's just dump them on the page down here somewhere. OK, so if we head over, sure enough, we've got a bunch of users here. And of course, if we take a look at our network tab, we don't have an additional request for these. These are all being loaded on the initial page load. So we don't have a slow request here, but we could speed this up by rendering the page first and then loading and rendering out the users. How do we do that with Inertia V1? Well, let's take a look. So we would go ahead and use something like Inertia Lazy. So we could say Inertia Lazy. We could create out a callback in here, and then we could go ahead and return this data like this. Now I'm going to go ahead and specifically add a sleep in here just to simulate a slightly slower request. And by the way, in Inertia V2, the Lazy method here has been deprecated. So if you are trying to use Lazy in Inertia V2, it should work. But this is now changed to optional. Now, it's not going to work here because I'm working on Inertia V1, but it's just something worth mentioning. OK, so if we go ahead and refresh here, you can see that we don't get any data. Our job now is to manually load this data in with a partial reload with Inertia's router. So how do we do that? Well, in V1, what we would do is probably on an unmounted hook within view, go ahead and use Inertia's router, which we would need to pull in as well. So let's make sure we import that from Inertia View 3. And then we would do a reload here and we would choose the data that we want to load in. So that would be the user's prop. So now what's going to happen is when we refresh the page, we get a second delay. We get a really fast initial page load here and then the data starts to roll in. So this has uh, been a really good way to just speed up your apps, but it's a little bit cumbersome. It's a little bit clunky to have to do this. So let's take a look at deferred props. So I'm going to go ahead and just upgrade this application. So let's do an NPM install on Inertia V3 next. And let's do the same thing for Composer and requiring Inertia V2. OK, so this functionality will still work. You can see that it works in exactly the same way. There's nothing wrong with doing it this way. But let's take a look at how we specifically use deferred props. So I'm going to get rid of this unmounted hook. We're not going to need that anymore. We're also not specifically going to need the router because we're not needing to manually do this anymore. Over in web, this is going to change. You can see that this is being deprecated. Let's go over and change this to defer. OK, and have a look at what happens. So let's go over and give this page a refresh. And you can see that we pretty much get the same functionality as lazy or optional. But by using defer, this is going to let Inertia know that we can now use this with the new defer component. And really, the defer component acts like a wrapper for the functionality that we've just done and that we would have to usually do in V1. So let's take a look at what this looks like. So the first thing that we're going to do is come over and pull in the deferred component from Inertia JS View 3. And then somewhere in our page wrapping this data, we're going to go ahead and pull in that deferred component and use that deferred component. And we can reference it like this or like this. It doesn't really matter. Let's go ahead and dump out the users and see what happens. So if we head over to the browser, you can see this isn't working at the moment. We need to pass a couple of options through to this to get this working. The first thing that we need is a data prop. This tells us which of the props that we have deferred and what we want to pull in within this component. We know that that is users. Let's go back over and give this a refresh. And you can see that deferred requires a template fallback slot. 
this is going to be the state or what is rendered within here if this content is currently in the process of being loaded. So let's go ahead and define out a template inside of here and let's give the fallback name to this. And then in here we can do anything like loading or you could show a spinner, whatever you wanted to do. Now, otherwise down here, this is going to be the prop data that we would usually display on the page. So this will be empty initially, but then of course it will kick in once this data has been loaded. So let's go back over and give that a refresh. And you can see we sure enough, we get that fallback loading and then this data rolls in. So pretty much what has happened here and the difference between V1 and V2 is that rather than have to build this functionality ourselves and do a manual router reload, this has gone ahead and wrapped this in a component, which makes it super easy to use. And the thing I love about this is that the fallback template here means that we don't have to define out up here any things like this. So we don't have to do something like is loading and create an, a ref out and pollute our script section with these booleans which detect whether something is loading or not. And then if we were to do a router reload here, if we were doing this and only pulling in users, what we would normally then have to do is say, on start, we're going to set is loading to true. And then on finish, we're going to set is loading to false. It just cleans all of this stuff up and wraps this in a nice component for us. Okay, so we've looked at one piece of data, but what if we have multiple props that we want to load in? Let's just take a look at how this works. So I'm going to go ahead and just copy this down. So I'm just going to give this a entirely different name. So let's say more users just as an example and then let's just add one more in here since we're not working with any other models so let's say even more users okay so if we want to go ahead and load all of these in within this deferred component what do we do so we've got users in here let's just take a look at what the request looks like so we're going to wait that's going to take about three seconds now because we've got three pieces of data and if we just take a look at the network tab under fetch XHR, you can see that the props that have been loaded are all of these. Now, what's actually happened here is all of these have been loaded in one go. So the request has taken three seconds because we've got a one second delay, a simulated delay for each of these items. Now, what happens if we want these to be loaded in parallel? So let's go over to our web routes again we can actually give these a key or a name. So as the third argument or the second argument to de defer, we can give this a specific key. So let's just call this one. Let's call this one. And you can give these any string name you want. It doesn't matter what you add these in. And let's add this as two. So what's now going to happen is these two are going to be grouped together in one request. And this one is just going to be grouped together in one request. So they're just unique keys that tell Inertia how to load these. You can see now we've ended up with two requests, one that took one second because we've got one request with one name that has a one second delay and this one with two seconds. And you can see if you look at the props here, we've got that even more users. And then in here, the props that are being loaded are them too. So this is really helpful rather than having a huge delay to wait for all of the props that you've deferred to be loaded, you can group these together depending on the priority of them or how slow you expect them to be. So in here, we can do exactly the same thing. It's a little bit difficult to see at the moment because we're just dumping these together. But what we can do in here is we can add in a array instead so we can go ahead and specify that we want users more users and then we could create a separate deferred prop if we wanted to or deferred component to deal with even more users so we could add that into an array still if we wanted to so even more users and let's dump out even more users down here and let's dump out our users and more users in here. So we still need to add these to our defined props. So let's say more users, and that's going to be an array and the same for even more users. Okay, let's go ahead and give this a refresh. We get two loading things. The first bunch here gets loaded in, and then the second bunch gets loaded in as well. So it really depends on what kind of data you are working with, how slow each of these you expect them to be, and of course, how you are designing out whatever you are deferring.